From the iconic landmarks that grace the city's skyline to the hidden gems that whisper tales of centuries past, and the tantalizing flavors of global cuisine, London weaves its magic into the fabric of those who visit. Here in our London Travel Guide, we'll go over the top things to do in London that every traveler should experience. First, please like, comment and share our video and subscribe to our channel. Now, let's dive in. Iconic London needs no introduction. Picture yourself standing in the shadow of the towering Big Ben, watching the changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace, or walking through centuries of history at Westminster Abbey. First start with a stroll down gorgeous Pavilion Road in Chelsea, just steps from the Sloan Square Tube station. It's a picture-perfect London street, lined with shops, restaurants, cafes, and boutiques. It's going to be a long day, so why not start by grabbing a coffee and gourmet donut from Bread Ahead? Brainchild of founder Matthew Jones, Bread Ahead is not only a great bakery, they offer incredible baking courses at locations across the city and now around the world with locations in Dubai and Jeddah. For restaurant and bar options, let's stay in Sloan Square for now. The Botanist is a trendy and elegant place for some of the best handcrafted cocktails in town. Just across the street is the incredible Cobert, a French cafe with an incredible bar and menu to match. Request to sit on the terrace for a truly London experience. A few minutes walk down King's Road you'll find Duke of York Square. You'll find lots of great dining and shopping choices. In some of the outdoor space is a must, and when it gets a bit chilly, it's still awesome, with heaters to keep you snug. Venturing a bit further, a visit to the Shoreditch is a must for food and cocktail lovers. Young and fashionable, here you'll find some of the hippest places to eat and drink in all of London. Cheap, cheerful and tasty. Stop in at Troy Bar. The Caribbean feel is a nice change from the more British spots. Their jerk chicken and a beer makes for the perfect lunch. If flavor is your thing, you won't want to miss Smokestack, where you dine off metal plates savoring the best barbecue in all of London. If you're looking to fancy it up a bit, check out the Coral Room at the Bloomsbury Hotel. Besides being a feast for the eyes, the cocktails are off the chart, and you'll feel like a movie star as you sip from a selection of English sparkling wine. For sightseeing, we all know about the classic places like Piccadilly Circus, the Tower of London and Buckingham Palace. In this video let's cover some of the top things to see in London that might not be on your radar. First up, Sir John Stones Museum. It's hard to properly describe. The museum is built in the home of Sir John Stone, one of England's most important architects. Quirky, incredible and staggering are words often used, but you won't quite get it until you visit. Kept exactly as it was when he died in 1837, the museum is a respectful hodgepodge of ancient sculpture, paintings, furniture and pretty much anything else that interested him. Also, take time to stroll Lincoln's Inn Fields, the largest public square in London. Next to visit in London is the East End. If you really want to step back in time, in a real neighborhood, London's East End is the place to do it. Sure, it's famous because of Jack the Ripper, but it's so much more. Home to one of the all-time best markets, anywhere. Old Spitalfields Market is a destination of its own with a history to match. And it's at this market that one of my favorite walking tours departs, Eating Europe's East End. A combination walking history tour with food and drink. I love the way our guide brought the East End to life, and the tasting stops were woven perfectly into the story. Up next is Hampton Court Palace. You'll definitely pass Buckingham Palace, and you might even see the impressive changing of the guards. But for those of us who want to get up close to historic palaces, it's simply not enough. But a journey to Henry VIII's Hampton Court Palace does the trick. Just a short ride from London via the National Rail, the palace allows you access to one of the most important royal residences in history. Visit the Great Hall, the famous Judah Kitchens, and the Baroque Palace of William and Mary, all in one palace. And if you're traveling with kids, they will love it. There's a dress-up station, an outdoor maze, and acres of pop grounds to explore, plus ice cream stands and cafes. If you need inspiration on where to stay in London, look no further. In London, accommodation ranges from the opulent to the basic and just about everything in between. Here are just a few of our favorites. Our first pick is the Londoner, located right in the heart of Leicester Square. It's the world's first super boutique hotel and has been called an urban resort by critiques. From the moment you step through the doors, you know you're someplace special. 
In the hotel, the residence is a private space for guests only that is perfect for a cocktail before kicking off the night in the West End. And if the night gets a little wild, no worries. A selection of in-room drip therapies will have you back on your feet and feeling great in no time. Sloan Square Hotel is another great option. It's located in the heart of one of London's most premium neighborhoods and well worth a stay. Perfectly located for shopping, dining, cocktails, and steps away from the Royal Court Theatre and the Sloan Square Tube Station. This charming hotel is a perfect choice for those looking for great quality and pricing. Finally, check out the Ruckwell. Well located in West London, close to shopping, museums, and nightlife, the Rockwell is a lovely boutique hotel inside a Victorian townhouse. Well appointed with super comfortable rooms, it has good outdoor space, which makes for a perfect place for a drink from the restaurant bar and all at a great price point. Now, let's look at where to do some shopping in London. We've already mentioned Spitalfields Market. This place is absolutely stuffed with places to eat, drink, and of course, shop. One of the things about this market is the amount of local artisans who bring their creations to the market for sale. If you like to stroll and stumble upon things you never imagined, this is the place for you. If there's one street that seems to have it all, it's Sloan Street. Here you'll find some of the most famous brands in the world, but you'll also find art galleries, cafes, bars, and small shops that make visiting and shopping here a welcome experience. Also worth seeing is Battersea Power Station. For decades, the Battersea Power Station provided electricity for a fifth of London's population. Today the building has been transformed into a public space unlike anything else in London. Now home to global luxury brands, local markets, restaurants, and an amazing rooftop bar. Even for non-shoppers, Battersea is worth a visit just to experience the architecture and history. Finally, we'll end our video with some non-touristy things to do in London. Take a self-guided tour or walk around Shoreditch's vibrant street art scene. Featuring works by renowned artists like Banksy and also new and upcoming local talents. Next, check out Little Venice. Soak in the peace and calm of this picturesque neighborhood in West London lined with charming houseboats, cafes, and waterside pubs. If you feel the need to escape the hustle and bustle of the city, get on over to Hampstead Heath for the day. There's a beautiful park set in North London offering panoramic views of London's skyline, serene ponds, and wooded trails. And to end it all, check out London's speakeasy scene. Experience London's thriving cocktail culture via speakeasies tucked away in alleys and basements across the city. Before we go, we want to share a dirty little secret about London's history that no one knows. During the 19th century, the Thames was heavily polluted due to the lack of proper sanitation systems. Waste from homes and industries flowed directly into the river, creating an unbearable stench, especially during the hot summer months. The foul smell was so pervasive that it permeated the city, affecting Parliament sessions held nearby in the Palace of Westminster. Members of Parliament were reportedly forced to douse curtains with chloride of lime to mask the odour. The story has a happy ending though, because the crisis ultimately led to the construction of London's modern sewer system that still operates today. Thanks for watching the Europe Travel Guide to London. To help support our young channel, please do like the video and subscribe. Plus tell us in the comments section which destinations you'd like us to cover. See you in the next video.